All right, what's up guys, welcome back. So today uh, I'm working on this boost cut switch again and wanted to address some concerns from the other video about like building pressure and stuff. I did play with a little bit more after I recorded that stuff yesterday. So I wanted to kind of show you what else I did, what I found and why I'm still not very comfortable with it. It's working better, more accurately. So this will be a little bit better of a test, basically. We do have throttle plate open. I did open it yesterday, uh, but I wanted to show you guys that this is open. I have it permanently held all the way open. What I really wanted to show you guys, and I didn't really look at this while I was making the video, but I checked it after. So when I put this up to 20 pounds, which is basically where I was going up to yesterday, We'll go over and look at the we'll go over and look at the boost gauge. And with that gauge on the compressor at like 20 pounds, this is only reading like five to seven pounds. It'll go up a little bit higher. Um, so I'd basically what I was trying to adjust for a little while yesterday before I looked at this was around the seven pound range, and that switch is only supposed to go down to like 14 and a half, so that's one thing. So this next little bit of footage kind of took a while to get this because I basically had to fill the compressor up to like 100 PSI uh, just to get it to read 15 to 20 pounds on the boost gauge. So I kind of had to go back and forth a bunch of times. I could only check it once then I'd have to fill the compressor back up. Made some adjustments but that switch is not very sensitive or maybe it's too sensitive so the resolution on the adjustment isn't very good probably because the range is so wide 14 psi to 145 so like an eighth of a turn could be three to four psi on the on the gauge so it's a little bit difficult to adjust it and what i'm seeing is the which you saw in the other video it was intermittent you could hear the continuity buzzer kind of changing but what i noticed from actually watching the multimeter it wasn't actually opening the circuit so the buzzer wasn't buzzing all the time but it wasn't completely opening the circuit every time but it is opening the circuit when it shouldn't be or when i don't want it to so it's kind of intermittently opening the circuit as it's getting to pressure and then it'll completely open the circuit and then as the pressure comes back down it'll close it again and it'll stay closed until it goes back to zero so that's what i'm going to show you here still not very comfortable with it so i did order a different switch i ordered a 4 psi to 24 psi adjustable honeywell hob switch those should be pretty decent i know they're used quite a bit a lot of people use them and you guys have been rec recommending it like all the time in a bunch of different videos and i've been looking at them for a while so finally decided to buy one it was like 35 bucks and hopefully the resolution will be better because it's a 4 to 24 psi so it won't be so sensitive so we'll try one of that it's a normally open switch instead of a normally closed like this one and i kind of have a different idea for that one just to pull timing instead of actually killing the ECU or killing injectors. So similar to the other idea that I had with the intake air temp sensor, I did test that button at the track where I would push it and closes the circuit, pulls timing. That does work, it works pretty good. So my thought now is just to use the normally open switch. When it closes, it completes the intake air temp circuit and just pulls timing. So if I did get into an overboost situation, it would just pull timing and not fucking blow it up. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on the buzzer. <clears throat> and I'm gonna turn the pressure up. So this is gonna go really high, like 60 PSI. You can hear it kind of turning off already. But the problem with that is it's intermittent and it's turning off already way below 15 PSI, so it was like on and off, kind of intermittent. And I don't really like that while it's swinging between 5 and 15. So you don't hear the buzzer, but we'll watch this thing come down and see when it actually turns on. So there, now it closed the circuit again around 17 pounds. So that thing's actually decent, set around 17 pounds. And this will stay on the whole way as it comes down. 
keep that circuit closed so the computer would be on. But as it's swinging up, it's really weird. It like it's intermittent and actually opening the circuit as it's swinging up. So I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna turn the pressure up, and you'll see when it gets into the five to ten range, the, the buzzer is gonna kind of be intermittent. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna record with a different camera over on the multimeter and I'm actually going to watch the numbers to see if the load it says open load or not on it it might just be the the buzzer not buzzing properly if it still has a connection so we're going to do both and see how it works drink this up so I got 100 psi in the tank that's how much I'm needing to actually do this and then this is going to go up to like 65 <clears throat> so there it says open load open load I don't have it on the buzzer right now open load open load and it's not even at 15 psi yet so now it's open and it should stay open <clears throat> and that's about 17 psi so that would work pretty decent but it seems like it's opening and breaking that circuit way too soon it's opening it opening it and we'll watch this thing bleed off bleed off pressure now it's going back below 17 and it closes the circuit again so I haven't actually watched it like this go all the way back down once so we'll see what it does while it's while it's coming up down and bleeding pressure off and see if it actually opens that circuit in the same spot so it's really weird when it's pressurizing the circuit it will go open when it shouldn't be intermittently but as the pressure is coming down it doesn't do that so this is a normally closed switch that's opening so I wonder if I need to I wonder if it'd be better off doing a, a normally open switch that closes when it sees boost because now that contact is made and it'll stay contact it'll stay made That's back down to five and it hasn't actually opened that circuit yet. So this test will be with the buzzer. I'm gonna turn the pressure up, I'll let it go kinda of high and then I'm gonna pull it off fast and we'll see uh, how fast it reacts to turn the circuit back on when we can hear the buzzer. It's already open. So that one opened at like 10 pounds when it was coming faster. Dad, look at what I'm doing for my truck. Oh. Okay, so we're going to. I don't know if we'd be able to hear the buzzer, but we'll watch a video and see. So I might play around with this switch a little bit just to see what it does. I might just like hook it up to a light. If it's if it's opening at around 10 pounds like that, that's kind of what I'm running for boost right now. <clears throat> so I might hook it up to a light or something like that that I have inside the cab. So if I'm on it, it doesn't kill the engine or anything. It just turns the light on and I know if the switch is actually opening in the wrong spot <clears throat> because I don't actually want to tune it above 15 PSI to test it. So I'll try it with a light. If it light is turning on, then I would know that it's actually activating that in the wrong spot so I got a couple options now so the ignition cut the PCM relay cut or the timing pull and I kind of like the timing pull idea because you'd be able to feel it kind of fall on its face and and get out of it so might just do that this uh, switch would be right here and your intake air temp wiring is right here so it basically just wouldn't have to use any relays or anything else 
just wire this into this where it's basically connecting these two wires when that switch closes and that would pull all your timing out. So I got a few options. Uh, also wanted to let you guys know I did figure out the fuel pressure issue. It was actually the regulator that I had on the return side, the aftermarket China boost reference regulator. So it was uh, this style regulator here. Um, this thing was like $16 and I don't think it works very well. Just kind of went ahead and made the assumption that that thing was accurate and it wasn't. I never tested it at the rail and uh, before I thought it was the rail regulator that was making it read really high in combination with that one but when I pulled that thing out I got it to go down to like 45 psi. So it was reading between 80 and 130 with that regulator in there. When I pulled that out it dropped down to 45. So I ordered a new regulator that's on the way. Yeah that thing something's wrong with it not working. So that completely explains why. Why the hose popped off inside the tank, the other hose broke, and why I had to pull like 20% fuel out at the track because it was 130 psi. So way too much fuel. That thing should be here pretty soon. I did order a different boost controller just to test it out because I don't really know if I like this one because this one has like the line coming out, then it goes through a check valve, then it goes through the uh, the adjuster, and then it has like a bleed off, and I don't really like that. I got the one that just has the one in and the one out, and should be pretty good. Just wanted to give you guys an update on the boost cut idea, and like I said, concept is still alive. We'll figure out a way to make it work. Right now, just kind of being a nerd and playing with this stuff and having fun. So that's what it's about. Track day tomorrow. If I can get a different, I've been looking around locally for a pressure regulator that I can just use for tomorrow. If not, uh, we'll figure something out. Maybe still go to the track, but that's it for this one.